Welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church Online. My name is Marian Brown, one of the associate pastors, and this is our on-demand version of the sermon that will be preached on this Sunday morning. And please know that our Sunday services will be live streamed beginning at 9 a.m. for the contemporary service and 11.15 for the traditional service. If you would like to have the entire worship experience on demand, that will be available on Monday morning. We appreciate you being a part of our online community and we invite you to be active and participate through your giving. And so we thank you for your support and your generosity. Before we listen to this Sunday sermon, let's have a moment of prayer. Gracious and holy Lord, we ask that you remind us that wherever we are, we are on holy ground. And so may you help us make space. So may we receive a message that you have for us in this moment. Be in our hearts so that it's open. Be in our ears so that they are open and be a part of our lives so that we are open to receive a challenge and an invitation. Work within us now and all around us so that we may know your presence and we may feel it fully. Through a moment now of words and scripture, speak to us, amen. Let's listen to this Sunday sermon. Greetings, my name is Jeff Ross and I'm one of the associate pastors here at the Roswell United Methodist Church. Uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, being a part of this time of worship today. I wanna start by reading our scripture. It comes from 1 John chapter one uh, through the second chapter, verse two. And it says there, what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. And the life was manifested and we have seen and testify and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. What we have seen and heard we proclaim to you also so that you may have fellowship with us and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son Jesus Christ. These things we write so that our joy may be made complete. And this is the message that we have heard from him and announced to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for those of the whole world. May God add his blessing to our reading and hearing of his word. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for this day and for the chance to gather together in this time. Uh, we come to you uh, and ask your wisdom and guidance as we look at this passage and uh, reflect on these words, that you give us wisdom and guidance and that your spirit will fill us. For it's in Christ's name we pray, amen. Well, good morning or, or good afternoon or evening or whenever it is that you're watching this. Uh, you know, the uh, Gospels um, uh, talk about all of the events that take place after Easter. 
uh, or, or on that Easter morning, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And, uh, but there's some more recent manuscripts that, that uh, may give light to the first thing that Jesus said when he came out of the tomb. And I understand it was this. Ta-da! <laughs> That's a little silly, I know. But it's not far from uh, where I want us to, to kind of look today as we look at this passage. First John was written at the end or, or so of the first century, uh, probably not the same writer as the Gospel of John. Uh, scholars look at writing style, they look at sentence structure, they look at common words and phrases and where they're placed and how they're used uh, in the paragraphs and in the sentences. And for a long time, they attributed 1 John with the Gospel of John writer, said they were the same person. But more recent scholarship points to a different author. And so I want to be clear, I don't want this conversation around authorship to be a stumbling block. If you've done some homework and you think it's different than that, then, then go with that. We can still be friends. So a couple of highlights, though, that jump out uh, of this passage. And, it, uh, and, and in reading this passage, we understand that it's a generation or so after the death and resurrection of Jesus. And these are sort of the collective thoughts of, uh, of the church. They are uh, representative of some of the things the church has discovered post-Easter. Uh, it, it's what has, it bubbles to the top as John writes this letter of what he wants to say and what he wants to highlight, things they've come to understand, things that have been revealed to them because of Easter. Because of Easter, these things have also come to light. And, and so uh, he talks a good bit about forgiveness. Uh, 1 John 1, 8 through 10, and then he picks that right up in the second chapter, the first two verses, uh, talking about forgiveness. That's, that's an important component uh, for John and, and a discovery that uh, is made in how they received forgiveness from, from God and Jesus, Jesus' death on the cross, and then how we uh, uh, extend forgiveness in our own lives to those around us. He talks a good bit about faith and witness. These are the things we've seen with our eyes and declare to you and want you to know. Uh, it's words of encouragement and hope uh, that, that uh, have given them life and they want to share it with us. And then this idea of light in darkness, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. And, and uh, 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 we need to come alongside of this idea of light and direction for our lives, that God is here to guide us and lead us. And if we trust and have faith in God, God will direct our path. And so these are things that were important, that they would have discovered, uh, that uh, have been at the forefront of what's grown out of their faith. And so with Easter, they didn't really know that was uh, going to happen. And so now over this first generation, here are the things they've also discovered. So I want to take that, just that little uh, synopsis of uh, what we read and, and just place it right here for a second. And we're going to pick it up and come back uh, in, in just a minute. Uh, but uh, I, I want to look at a, another part of this story, I think, that connects it and hopefully will tie all of this together in just a minute. Again, nobody was expecting Easter to happen. Jesus talked about it, yeah, and, and you and I can look back and read and say, oh, well, they should have expected it. Well, things like that just didn't happen, and so it's not unreasonable to see how they would have missed it. Uh, 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 in the Old Testament, uh, there are predictions and passages that point to what happens at Easter, but they only understood the Old Testament passages in that light after Easter. It was after Easter when they looked back and they said, oh, that's what that is talking about. And so you and I have the opportunity to read that now, knowing the story uh, and can see how all of those pieces come together. Uh, and so I have this odd sort of idea 
that uh, somewhere after all the dust had settled on Easter morning and early afternoon, that sometime in the afternoon, Jesus and God get together and they sort of high five each other uh, as if to say, it worked. We did it. Yay. Um, you know, be, uh, and, I, and I guess I'm humanizing uh, that a little bit because you and I have done that. We've had an event or some special task uh, where we, we, were, we needed everything to go right to be able to pull off the surprise or pull off the event uh, of whatever was taking place. And, and once it's over and it happened and it goes pretty much just like we had planned it, uh, there's a moment where we're ecstatic, we're happy, we're dancing around, but there's also a moment where we're uh, a little surprised. Again, because things go wrong sometimes. Things we didn't account for take place. Uh, and, and so when it all goes right, we're, we're excited, but still a little bit surprised. Well, I wonder if there was any of that with God and Jesus having a conversation like, oh my gosh, this, this is great. It couldn't have gone uh, any better. Uh, Anyway, I, that, that's just a thought. If, if you don't have that same thought, that's okay. We can still be friends. So the, this resurrection takes place. Uh, and so what does that mean going forward? Easter was last week, um, if you're watching this in sequence. Uh, Easter was last week. And so now what? Uh, if we just put Easter on a shelf and say, that was great, and wait for Easter next year, we, we miss the point. Easter should uh, instigate some uh, ideas, thoughts, creativity, actions on our part. So the Sunday after Easter, which is where we are today, uh, how does Easter impact where we go and what we do? Um, I think maybe even as, as important as Easter is, what happens next is just as important. How does Easter make a difference? So uh, if, if uh, Easter was a surprise, it was like uh, the, uh, God pulling the rabbit out of the hat or the cat out of the bag, letting the cat out of the bag. Uh, and, and now that it's out there, people go, oh, okay. And now they know that God is capable of something like that. So if God is capable of something like that, what else might God be capable of? And so I have this bag uh, and I thought it would uh, uh, be... Uh, worth spending some time looking at, at the bag and seeing what we could pull out of it. I remember, I wonder if you remember uh, the movie Mary Poppins. Uh, there's a scene where Mary Poppins is moving into her room and the children are helping her and uh, uh, she has a carpet bag kind of like this and she's a Pull, she pulls out a, uh, a hat rack and she takes it over and puts it down, puts her hat on it. It's about that tall. Uh, she, uh, she gets a mirror uh, that's about that big out of the bag and hangs it on the wall. Then she goes over and she gets a plant and then she needs some light for the plant. So she pulls out this floor lamp uh, that's six feet tall and puts it over there. So all of these great things she pulls out of the uh, the bottomless bag. Well, um, I don't have a, a bottomless bag, uh, but, but I do have a bag. And so as John is thinking about what was in the bag after Easter in this first generation, as we've already talked about, he listed uh, fellowship and witness and forgiveness and this idea of light and hope and direction. And all of these things were important for the church in that age. Uh, they were the things that were happening, that people were talking about, uh, that were making a difference in people's lives. And so because of Easter, these things also happened. These things were new, a surprise, uh, powerful in the early church. Uh, as people gathered for prayer, as they encouraged one another, uh, as friends and neighbors saw the actions of these Christians and wanted to receive what it was that they had. All of that that took place that John is writing about was a byproduct of what took place at Easter, the change that came over the followers of Christ. So as we look at our 
Easter and then try to figure out, okay, Easter took place and we, we spent some time talking about this incredible event. We can't just put that back on the shelf. Uh, if it really did have power and does have power, then what is it that we're discovering? Because Easter happened, then maybe this also could happen in our life and in our church and in our community. So help me consider a few things that might uh, be pulled out of our bag today. And so one of those things uh, would be forgiveness. Uh, maybe there's a person, maybe there's a relationship in your life that uh, isn't what it ought to be. And it's going to take you or the other person uh, stepping up and saying, hey, let, let's talk. Let's have a conversation. Let's get this thing behind us. It's going to take some compromise. It's going to take some listening and not over-talking. Uh, it's going to take some prayer. But if Christ can uh, step out of the grave and the power of God be at work in that event, then certainly God has the power to help you and I offer forgiveness and receive forgiveness. What about some hope of joy in our life? You know, sometimes we get so wrapped up in things that uh, they begin to eat on us and, and we don't have a place to put them. We keep harping on what went wrong, why it went wrong, uh, who did what to us, why it happened, how could have it have been. And we just go down that rabbit trail to such an extent that it robs us of our joy. How do we put stuff behind us? How do we turn it over to God? Well, if Easter really is real, if it took place, then there is power to do that. We can take that thing that's eating us and give it to God and walk away and experience the joy that God has for us. Where is there a need for hope? <laughs> in your life. You know, we've we just come out of the winter and we're seeing right now all of the plants in bloom and trees getting their leaves back and so many things that looked like they were dead that lay dormant in the ground but now are busting out and their colors are shining and uh, plants are taken off and it reminds us of this a season that sometimes happens in our lives where things happen, take place, uh, and then we, we have the courage to move on, to start over, to uh, make a, a, a fresh start in some area of our life. Maybe there's something that's happened in your life uh, that's been hard and it's been difficult and it's been a minute that you needed uh, to work through it. Well, if Christ can rise from the tomb and God's power is at work in that, then God's power can help you move on, move into a new place, uh, find hope in your life. Where is there an opportunity for service? Maybe you've been a Christian for a long time. Uh, maybe you've gone to lots of Bible studies, been involved in a Sunday school class, but haven't really uh, served in any sort of particular way in the life of the church or in the community or even uh, in your neighborhood or with your family. Where's an opportunity that's right before you where you can make a difference with your hands or your mind or uh, your uh, voice? Where's a place where you can encourage others, be of help? I, I bet there is a place, I bet there is a way that, that maybe God has shown you and nudged you a little bit, but you're afraid. Oh, I, I really don't matter. I really don't have that many skills. I really won't be that much of a help. We do all kinds of things to talk ourselves out of uh, using the gifts that we have. What about new life? Maybe there's an area in your life where uh, you just need a fresh start. 
Uh, you need a conversion. You need to, to, to stop going this way and turn and go that way. It might be in a relationship. It might be in your faith. Maybe you've been playing at church for a long time, uh, dancing around uh, your commitment to Christ. And maybe uh, with what's happened at Easter, you're fully convinced now that God is calling and moving and active in your life and you want to respond in some way with that. Maybe, maybe it's something else that comes to your mind. Maybe in the bag that, that, that you have, there's something else that you could, could pull out. Maybe you could get a bag today and put it on a table, just sort of stare at it for a while and, and see what you imagine or what God tells you might be in that bag that's time to pull out. Because again, if, if Easter is just a day to celebrate, and all we have to show for it is a nice picture on the commons with our family in the, with the flower cross as a backdrop, then, then we've missed the point all together. Easter helps us imagine new possibilities. Easter helps us dream God-sized dreams. Easter helps us confront any foe. Let us pray. God, I thank you for your love and grace and mercy. I thank you that you guide us, empower us, lead us, and that in the, the shadow of the open tomb, uh, we might recognize, God, that you're still at work in our life and in our world today. So what is it that you're still revealing to us? What is it that we've not yet seen or imagined that you're leading and guiding and pointing us to. And we say, oh, uh, that could never happen. I can't do that. I can't go there. But maybe with your power, recognizing Easter does represent you, your work in our world today, that we can. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much for joining us online. It is a blessing to have the gift of technology to have sermon this way. We thank you for participating. And just a reminder, if you wanna see the live services, 9 a.m. on Sunday for contemporary and 11.15 Sunday morning for traditional services. And always we will have the full on-demand worship experience on Monday morning. And if there's ever a time that you would like to join us here at the physical location, we're located at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, Roswell, Georgia. We wanna be connected with you. If you have a prayer request, please let us know by emailing pray at rumc.com. And we would love for you to be a part of our ministry through your giving. If you would like to support our campus and our ministries, you can do so at rumc.com slash give. And now hear these words of a benediction. Love without fear, serve with commitment. And in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go in peace. Amen.